This trick that I'm going to be doing now, I seen a, a performance of it by a fellow called Andy Field about seven years ago. Uh, I sat there and I worked it out. So I don't know if this is actually the way he does it, but it works for me, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I say, nice one by Andy Field. Got to give him the credit for it. I hope you enjoyed the performance and I hope you stick around for the tutorial. Here we go. Let's see how it goes. Hello viewers, welcome back to the card mat. As you can see I've got four cards on the table. I'm not going to tell you what they are just yet, apart from the fact that they're very important to this trick. Speaking of the trick, I need you to select a card. So if I just riffle the pack, you just tell me when to stop. About there? Okay. So I'll take that as being your card. Now I don't want to know what your card is, so I'm actually going to turn around while I show you it. Right, so I'm turning around. And I've shown you the card and I hope you can see it. Uh, please remember it. I want to put it down in three, two, one, and the card's gone. And I'm back. Right. Now what I'm going to do is lose your card somewhere into the middle of the pack and get it lost. Now I'll introduce you to my four helper cards. And it's probably no surprise to any of you that they're actually the four aces. You see we've got the ace of spades, we've got the ace of diamonds. We've got the Ace of Clubs, and we've got the Ace of Hearts. Right? Because the Aces are magical, aren't they? We all know they're magical, and they do pretty weird stuff. I mean, for example, if I just click over the top, we find that one of the Aces turns itself face down. If I click over the top again, we should find that a second Ace turns face down. And if I click over the top again, we should find... That third ace turns face down. And if I click over again, would you believe it? That all four aces have now turned face down. It's only really magical. But that had nothing to do with this trick. I just thought I'd show you how magical the aces were. Now getting back to the trick. The aces are going to find your card. And the first way they're going to find it is by telling me the value of your card. And all I've got to do is click over the top and pass them through my hand and we'll see that they're telling me your card was actually a king. And we click over the top again, then they'll tell me the suit. See, we've got the diamond, we've got the spade, we've got the club, and we've got one facing down. So if we've got diamond, spade and club, that can only mean yours has got to be the king of hearts. Hang on, that's not the king, that's the ace. What good's that? We've got the king of diamonds, king of spades and the king of clubs. <sighs> Mind you, I did say the aces were going to help me find your card. So far they've identified your card. That should be good enough. No. Okay. I'll tell you what. If I cut the ace of hearts into the middle of the pack and give a little riffle at the back and give the aces a chance to work the magic inside and I spread through the pack we should find somewhere we have the four aces with one card sandwiched right in the middle of them. Well, they'd already worked out that it was a king, and they worked out it was the heart. So this, by rights, should then be the king of hearts. The next question I need to ask is, was the king of hearts actually your car? Because I didn't see it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. And if you'd like to learn how it's done, don't go nowhere. Well, I hope somebody is like that enough to stick around for the tutorial. Otherwise, I'm just going to be speaking to myself, aren't I? Right. Let's get into it. We need the four kings and the four aces. Obviously. Um, the order you want them set up, <coughs> as you can see here, see here with them, while they're all facing up, you have spade, then diamond, club, and heart. So if you turn them over, heart is the top one. Right, with the the kings, you want the king of hearts as the top one. Then the two black ones, they can go in any order they want to, with the king of diamonds on the bottom. Yeah. On the top, you know what I mean. Diamond, spade, club, and heart. So either that way, the king of hearts is the top one. Right. 
Now I always start off with it on the table and these on the, the pack. But there, there comes a point in, in this near the start where you've got to do a, a, a triple lift to get into a marble tilt. Um, some people might struggle with the, the triple lift because you've got to do it very quickly. Best thing I can suggest to you if you're going to struggle is put a crimp in the top card of the pack just so you get a little angle in the corner and then so that sits onto the top of the pack like that and it's got a little slope there so when you put the kings on you can see there's a gap there where you can just get your pinky in and pull straight down and straight away you've got a break underneath the cards above it or as you're going to do in the thing the, the trick what if you've took their card off the top of the pack and you're putting them back together again you just sliding your hand across till your thumb gets to that corner and your thumb picks it up and that way you get it right because your thumb's picking it up a bit higher you're getting set up for a marrow tilt straight away with a big gap at the back right so you start off as I say crimp your card if you need to put your four kings on the top the diamond the two black ones with the heart on the top have your four aces out there that one should be the ace of hearts that one should be your ace of spades right so they set up like that um i always say i mean you can if you want to have the cards the aces in the pack and pull them out of the pack at the start as long as you end up with them in that order it doesn't matter what way you do it but i always do it with them on the table and say you know i've got four cards out of the pack uh, you can't say, you know, I've taken the liberty of taking four cards out because I need you to pick one and I don't want you picking one of these four. It gives you a reason for the four cards being out. Use whatever pattern you need to. Then what you need to do is force that King of Hearts on them. And I always find it easier doing this on a Ripple Force. So you can either split the pack in half and keep a break, Ripple down and then pick it up at the break and put them cards onto the top take the top card off, come back, pick up and get into your marrow, ready for your marrow tilt. And that way you force the king on them. Or the way I've done it in the performance was just riffle down the side and as I'm taking the pack away, I just keep my fingers on that top card. So that top card gets pulled. Obviously not that bad, I'm exaggerating here, so you can see it moving. So when you're doing it quick and you do it, tilt your hand away. Just do a little tilt with your hand towards yourself. Just so that they can't see that card going on there. So I'll just put the king down there. Drop the king on the table. Again, put the cards back. And as I said, just put your hand across and pick up at that little crimp and you're ready on your marrow tilt then. If you didn't want to do that, that's why I say it'd be very tricky for you to get a three card lift as quick as that. There we go, done. Instead of trying to do all this malarkey, trying to get your three card lift. So you just turn their card down, you put the cards together, you come across, you picked up at that, that crimp and you're ready for your marrow tilt with a bit of a gap there. You let them look at the card, you don't get to see it, you let them look at it. So they've looked at the card and then you do the marrow tilt, well put in like the marrow tilt. If you don't know the Marrow Tilt, I have got um, a tutorial for it. I'll leave a link in the description box. But you basically just push a couple of cards in the, from the middle of the pack, really. Then you pick the card up and you're just sliding it into that gap. But you've got the pack on a bit of an angle, so it gives the illusion of depth. But when you're pushing it in, you want to catch a break underneath it and a break between the top three kings and that king. So you need to end up with two breaks. So when you push it in, you need to be in that kind of a position. Obviously that's exaggerated so you can see what I mean. But you've got a break between the pack and your king of hearts. And you've got a break between your king of hearts and the three kings on the top. So you hold it in that position. And you say, right, now I'll bring these four cards into it. And square them up. And just place them straight onto the top of the pack. And as soon as you put them on, you're just picking up them. With the one break, you got one break between the three kings and your king of hearts. Or you just put them three aces, uh, four aces, straight onto the top of them. So you're holding a pinky, a thumb break 
on the King of Hearts at the bottom. Because now you're going to just pull the cards back a bit so they can see the top cards facing down. You pull the Ace of Spades off, square it up with the pack, and pull back so again they can see that red. You pull the Ace of Diamonds off, and this time as you're squaring up, you're going to drop them two Aces and the King of Hearts and pull back. So again, they see a normal card on the top, but you're just going to put two Aces down with the King of Hearts on it. So that's now on the top of the pack. Then you do the same with the Ace of Clubs. You pull back so they can see the top, put your thumb on it, pull it out, square it up at the bottom, and say, and I've got the Ace of Hearts. Then you can put the pack down, but be careful not to knock it, because if you just knock the top a bit, they're going to start seeing the Aces on the top. So you make sure you, that's all square when you put it down. Then you can go into, again, whatever dialogue you want to. Um, but I say about them being magical and to give an example, I'll just click over them. And then I'll do an Elmsley, uh, Elmsley count. Uh, again, if you don't know an Elmsley count, I'll leave a link in the description box, which will take you to my tutorial on it. And in that tutorial for the Elmsley count, the move that comes straight after this is also taught in it. So it would be worth your while taking a look at it. So you do an Elmsley count, and I say I'm not going to go into detail about what you do on at the moment. So you just do an Elmsley count to show that one of the cards has turned over. But as you put the aces back, you put them back so that them three cards are sticking up higher. Because now you're going to put your finger on the top card and push the aces up and push just that top card up. So just the top card, which should be your king of clubs, goes up leaving the ace of spades and the ace of diamonds for them two to go square with so all you end up with if i show you the side is you end up with that the ace is square with them and that one's sticking out so you're just pushing the top card up as soon as your thumb you feel you feel your thumb hitting the kings at the back you can stop because you know they're squared then and you just take that card out and put it on the top so you've just shown one of the aces has turned face down then do whatever magical move you want to do again now this is that other move that say you're laying on the Elmsley count you hold the cards in biddle grip you slide the top card off you slide the second card off as you go to slide the third card you're just pushing the bottom card over with your fingers just over into your hand which is covered so it ends up like that and there you've got two cards and all you do is just put your thumb right on the end of these cards just so you don't go too far and trap that card as well and you can't get that to pull out you just trap the end of the, that card and you're pulling out just the one card and the one bottom card and putting on the top to show two and out facing down you square up again and you do that same move again hold them middle grip pull the top card off Pull the second card off, just push the bottom card over slightly. You only have to go over a little bit, you don't have to go over masses. And you just trap the very, t just on the, the white board, I say, of the card, you get your thumb and put pressure on it. So you can just slide out that card on its own, leaving two cards there. Now you're showing three cards facing down with one facing up. You do your magic gesture again, and then you just do a straight Elmsley count to show four cards and now facing down. But as you're putting these top two on, you keep a break under them. So you've got a break underneath the top two kings because you're going to move them to the bottom in a minute. So you got a break there, and you go on all saying, you know, that was good, that wasn't showing you how magical they were. And just pick the cards up at the break and do like natural, natural gestures with your hands, but then put them back to the bottom. So you just put them two kings from the top to the bottom. Then you go, right, well, that has nothing to do with the trick or whatever. Um, but the way the aces are going to find your card is they're going to tell me. First off, they're going to tell me the value of your card. And you do your magic move and you just do a wrist, a fist push through, which is basically just a wrist kill. So you're just turning your hand face down. So you're turning the card from being that way to being that way. And then you're just pushing it out with your thumb. 
So you turn it over and you just push with your thumb like that. Just so they pop out the back. So turn it over, push with your thumb and they pop out. Now you want to do this bit pretty quick. Because you've got the Ace of uh, King of Diamonds there. And you don't want them seeing that too much at this at this point. Because once you finish this move, um, once you finish doing an Elmsley count straight after it, that's going to be sitting on the top of the pack for a while. So they see it for a while here. And they see it for a while at the end. They know you've got two kings. So as soon as you push it through, try and get your fingers over the index in the corner. As you spin it around, turn it towards yourself and go straight into an Elmsley count. Just so basically all they seen was a flash of red, so they know it's a red king. Um, how was that? I'm trying to remember the setup for that so I can do it again. <laughs> um, like that, isn't it? So I've just done. You just done the push through, you pull it through, and you go straight into your Elmsley to show four kings. And that's what they've seen. Then you say, right, now they told me that it's a king, now they're going to tell me the suit. And you just peel the cards off one at a time. So you peel the top one off, peel the second one off, peel the third one off. But hold them two, because they're your two aces. Hold them two together and put them down as one. So you've now seen the King of Diamonds, the King of Clubs, and the King of Spades. You say, well, that can only use one thing. And square them up and turn them over. As you turn that one over to place on the top, I say, the King of Hearts. But hang on, no, it's not the King, it's the Ace. And you just put that on top of the pile. And that's got you all set up there, then. Because you just put two Aces onto the top of the King of Hearts, which was already on top of the two other Aces. So everything's done at this point. So you say you then show these three kings. You show that all you got was three kings and none of them are the heart. Then going about saying that you know the aces were supposed to find the uh, their card. It's told you the value. It's told you the suit. It's told you that it is the king of hearts. But then you just cut the pack in half. And again, do whatever you want to do. And when you spread them out. You find that just about in the middle, depending on how good you cut the cards, I didn't cut them very well, did I? You find the two aces on one side, two aces on the other side of a face down card. And when you turn it over, it just happens to be their card, the King of Arts. I say it's a very nice trick. Um, we'll take a bit of practice. We'll take a bit of practice. But I can't see any reason why anybody can't do it. As long as you practice, practice, practice. Gotta be your gotta be your mantra, hasn't it? Practice, practice and practice. It's all you can do. I say it's a nice trick, one from Andy Field. Um hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you have a go at it. Hope you can master it. And I'll see you later.